This is episode 14, a dual episode with me and special guest Megan from Junk Seed, and we are talking about visiting a garden center today on Cultivating Guts. Hello, it's Tiffany, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts, a podcast where we discuss gardening, homesteading, gut health, and following your intuition. I am excited to be back with you guys. I've had so many insightful moments in just this short week and ideas about really important topics that I'm wanting to continue to share with you on the podcast. Today, I'm actually simultaneously video recording the podcast. So if you want to jump over to YouTube, you're welcome to watch us live at youtube.com forward slash Tiffany Hinton, and you can tune in there. If you are on YouTube, hello. Um, It is so nice to see you, and I'm so glad you're here. So I recently had a thought around what about those people that didn't grow up gardening? What about those people that might be intimidated to walk into the garden center? Like, let's see if we can get them some help. And so I was so excited when I connected with Kara and Kara, the um, one of the family owners of Jung Seed in Wisconsin. And then I connected today on the podcast with Megan, who is a Jung Seed employee and branch manager and just know so much about the garden centers, and we talk about what to bring with you when you come to the garden center, um, tips and tricks, any, you know, first-time mistakes, can you get a tree in your hatchback car, like all these little fun tidbits. You don't have to bring your own wagon, like they have wagons for you, and so much more on the podcast today, and I'm so excited to dive into this with you. But before we get started, I want to make sure that you rate and subscribe and review the Cultivating Guts podcast. Send me a screenshot of your review and we will send you our free four-day Hacking Your Health Gut Detox plan where you use food as medicine to heal your gut. As you are listening, screenshot your favorite part of this podcast today and share it with us on Instagram at gfmomcertified or at cultivating guts and we will get that reposted. I love reposting and I'm excited to hear what you thought of today's episode. If you have any insightful moments or ahas, please let us know. Send me a message. I am so grateful to you and all of our amazing listeners for helping us grow the podcast and share it with more people. And before we head into the show, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Can I share with you a secret weapon for thriving through the holiday season, thriving through life and just keeping my gut in check, right? This is Gluten Away from Just Thrive. Uh, I love their probiotics. I found them about 10 years ago. They're a female-owned company uh, based right here in Chicago. And this uh, Gluten Away product that they have is a combination that is my go-to for every meal that I eat out, all of my travel, whether I'm on an airplane or in a car, or even if I'm going to a friend's house and I'm just really not sure about the cross-contamination, this help keeps, helps me keep my celiac disease and Crohn's disease in remission. And when I pair this with their probiotic each day, my gut is truly thriving. I am, have painless uh, stomachs. I don't really have cramps anymore. I'm regular, which is awesome, right? Nobody really wants to get constipated. And I know that I have a healthy gut colony of good bacteria living in my microbiome. Just Thrive's probiotics are a unique blend of powerful digestive enzymes. Their probiotics are designed to support optimal digestion and protect against hidden sources of tummy troubles like gluten. This Gluten Away product has the enzyme protease in it, which is scientifically proven to break down the gluten protein to make it uh, digestible, to make it less uh, abrasive on the gut. The resilient probiotic spores support the complex and complete digestive process and help me alleviate inflammation in my body. Our whole family uses Just Thrive's probiotics, their products, and their gluten away, even my girls. You can bake with their capsules by opening them on the probiotics, the gluten away enzyme. Like I said, I take it anytime we're eating out. I take it at restaurants, at people's houses. Um, Even put it in my morning coffee, right? You can open it, add it to your coffee if you're not sure about the creamer or something else. And with the probiotic, you can do the same. You can add it to your coffee. Did you guys know that spore-based probiotics can survive warm temperatures even? This is how it allows us to bake with them. They can cook up to 500 degrees. And this means you can even add them to the probiotics to your morning pancake batter. Uh, We have a special, special community discount code just for you from Just Thrive Probiotics and their family at Just Thrive. And so the code GFMOM, G-F-M-O-M, saves you 15% off your total purchase at 
their website. We will add that to the show notes. Uh, We would love for you to add a bottle of Just Thrive Gluten Away and a bottle of their probiotics to your cabinets, in your kitchen, and also to your purse this season so you have it with you anytime you're eating out or you're at a friend's house or any celebration or holiday meal. And thank you again, Gluten Away, for being our podcast sponsor. And with that, we're going to head right into the show. Hello and welcome back to the Cultivating Guts podcast. I'm super excited today, as I told you in the intro, to be talking to Megan from the Jung Garden Center. They are a family-owned garden center seed supply company since 1907, I believe, in the Wisconsin area. And I'll let Megan fill us all in. Do you want to give us a little bit of background and history on Jung Seeds? Sure, absolutely. So yeah, actually Jung Garden Center has been a family owned and operated company for 115 years now. Um, We have five locations in Wisconsin. Uh, We have three in the Madison area, which is Fitchburg, Madison, and Sun Prairie. Uh, We have a northern store uh, up in Stevens Point. Uh, Our headquarters is at Randolph, and we have a garden center there. And then this year, we are opening our first ever pop-up garden center up in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, And that will be Yes, very. That'll be opening March 1st. My gosh, we had to talk about pop-up, but we'll get there. So last year, um, I actually came up to the Sun Prairie location one day with a client. We were building out her herb garden and we came up and we went and filled up a whole back end of an SUV with herbs and All different perennials. And she came home with a tree as well and some Absolutely. berry bushes. So it was really fun. And I, what I loved about it is that at the Sun Prairie location, there's an inside area. So you have like statues and artwork and you've got the succulents and like tools and all of this stuff. And then there's all the outside with the plants and the greenhouse and the trees and, and everything like, and so for me, I could spend hours and hours yes. walking around do. looking at stuff. <laughs> yes. So it was very, very fun. Uh, today, like we mentioned, we're going to be talking about for those of people that are new to gardening or want to get started, or maybe you just got overwhelmed because I know certain times in our lives, we walk into something that we think is going to be super exciting, or we're going to try something new and we get to, you know, whether it's the garden center or the grocery store and you're looking at your list and you're like wanting to cry because you don't think you can do it at that point. And so Megan has agreed to come with us today and kind of walk us through success tips, things she's seen in, you know, over the years. And to help us try to figure out how do we go from the catalog or your list, right, uh, to success and having it grow for the season. So I guess my first question is for somebody that's never visited a garden center, what should they bring? Oh, that's a good question. So, I mean, you can make it simple. You can be as complicated as you want. Uh, we have some people come in with their catalog all circled and, and picked out. Uh, we have people come in with lists uh, in the summer and spring. Uh, we do have people come in with their iPad with pictures of their garden space. Um, they let us know how much light they have, what they want to grow. So it's really up to you and what you want to do. Uh, we are all here for the customer and we want to give the best customer service. We love shopping with the customer um, and helping plan a successful garden. So even just today, um, I had a few customers bring in their seed lists uh, with the catalog. Um, the store here in Madison, we carry about 70% of the seeds that the catalog offers, all the big sellers. So we don't really have a problem finding uh, what they need. Um, Stevens Point and Randolph have, and Appleton have all the seeds. So you can find everything that's in the catalog there. Um, so yeah, and it's fun (laughs) to see everyone's list and kind of what they're, what they need. So then after we find all the seeds that they're looking for on our seed wall, we help with, are you doing seed starting? So do you need any of your trays, Mm -hmm. your inserts, your domes? We have lights, heed seeding mats, seed starting mix. We have a really nice Jung family garden center seed starting mix that we recommend for everybody uh, starting their seeds. So yeah, so that's like your basic seed starting. But then once we start getting into the April, May, when we get our plants, we get our vegetable starts, our herbs, annuals, stuff like that, then we can help with like your raised bed mix, um, raised bed gardening, 
all the straw bale gardening, uh, just big garden plots. Um, you know, I've, I've designed a lot of different gardens that incorporate edibles, uh, flowers, stuff like that. So, I mean, the, awesome. the range is huge. <laughs> so Yeah. So you bring up a great point, right? Just because it's snowing today in Chicago, and it's yeah. probably snowing up in Madison at this point if it's coming across, um, you can still visit the garden center. You don't have yes. to wait till Mother's Day, even Correct. though I know myself growing up, I grew up in central Illinois. It's like every Mother's Day, we would go to this huge yeah. greenhouse, and that was like the Mother's Day outing. But you don't have to wait till Mother's Day. You can, right. like you said, you can go now. Yep. You can get your seeds. Yes. Um, when it comes to seed starting, which when is the – like I've got personally the green peppers, the tomatoes, the kale is now up and like there's other things. But when is that cutoff, you think, from when you want to stop starting seeds and just like either buy the plant and put it in like a tomato plant or buy the seeds and just start them in the ground? Is right. there a date? Well, yeah, well, not really a date. There's a range. We have a really nice uh, graph on our Facebook page right now that you can look at. It's for Zone 5, uh, so it, it's helpful for you too. Um, but it depends really on the seed because some of them, there is a, a really nice zone for indoor sowing and then a zone for outdoor sowing. Of course, we don't do anything early. Like we don't want any frost or anything like that. All the seed packets will tell you you know, how soon to start depending on your frost date. Um, and then in, in last week of April here in Wisconsin, we start getting in our vegetable starts and perennials, annuals, stuff like that. But again, you know, it could still snow <laughs> or frost so <laughs> Good. depending on the weather. <laughs> yes. Up until about mid-May, we're yes. in this iffy window. And, Absolutely. And you're right. Yeah. There was – my husband did not grow up in a gardening – family or on the farm. And so um, a few, I don't know, a few years ago, we had a super late frost and I was like, I need the bed sheets. And he's like, why? And I'm like, I need to go cover everything. And he's like, yes. you mean you're putting sheets on the ground? I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> yes. We all do it every year. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbors will think I'm strange, but yes. it's fine. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I love this. Okay. So if they were to come in now, they could come in with a list. They could come in, like you said, with a catalog or nothing at all, or even pictures on their phone and right. it, and somebody at the sh at the center could help them. Yep. Yep. Figure We're it all, out. Yep. Very very cool. And then as it gets warmer, right, and you start to get the plants in, and you've got the perennials and the annuals and things like that, is there anything that makes it more useful? Like, do we bring a notebook with us? Do we bring yes a wagon? Yeah. So yeah, we all have wagons here for you to use. But yeah, a notebook or just an idea. It doesn't even have to be like a full design. If there's a certain color you like, or if you want edibles or just kind of an idea we can jump off of. There's so many possibilities that really any direction can help us, you know, get okay. kind of what, what you want. But yeah, just yeah, you don't really have to bring much, just your ideas and, and enthusiasm for, for gardening. I love it. I always make sure personally I have a bag of water or a bag of water, a bag of snacks and a bottle yeah. of water because I do tend to stay too. for hours. Yep. But, um, snacks for the kids. <laughs> snacks for the kids. Absolutely. Yep. And you've got it. Yeah. And I think it's important too, if you know in your mind the space or even if you've just walked it with your own feet, even if you haven't officially measured it, so you know kind of what to get. Because I made a mistake last year, my own. I've got to dig some stuff up and move it here this spring. And that happens, and that's part of gardening too. <laughs> yep, my elderberry bush I thought was going to be tiny, but then I got to looking at it a little bit more, and it's going to get like ten feet wide eventually, yep. right? And I'm yep. like, well, he's too close to the garage, so we're going to move Perfect. him. But so okay, so when we come into the garden center, you've got the carts there. People, how would they work? Like, how do they find somebody to help them? Yeah. So we all are wearing our beautiful blue Jung's blue shirts out in the nursery and perennial area. Um, they're, all of our stores are staffed where we have like a perennial lead, a nursery lead, and then our seasonal staff that are there to help out with watering and customer service. Um, and if you just find anybody, in, even if they can't help you with that specific project, they will find someone. We we are on walkie-talkies all day long discussing what needs to be done and who is needed where, um, and just if it's a simple question of like, where's the tomatoes or something like that. 
but yeah, it's it's easy to flag someone down. We're all here ready and waiting for customers to mm -hmm. come in. Um, and then anybody, yeah, any of the the people in the the lead roles really can help uh, with designs and ideas. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so we fill up our carts. We get all of our stuff. Our most, I know in the Sun Prairie, like the register was inside. So then you tend to take your cart and you get in line, just like if you were at the farmer's market. Um, are, are most of your centers set up that way? Yes. Yep. They're all pretty much set up the same. A couple of our stores, like in the Madison area, have outdoor, one outdoor or mobile register uh, that okay. we did start during our that first COVID season where, you know, people didn't feel comfortable being inside as much. Yeah. Um, but we kind of, at that point, spread everything out, all the registers, um, a lot of the aisles, a lot of the shopping areas, so people could space out. So we do have that one mobile register outside that's credit card only, so it's kind of quick in and out. But a lot of people like to come in and get in the store and, you know, buy their fertilizers and their gloves. And it's kind of more of an event that way instead of just a quick in and out. You bring up another great point, Megan, right? Like yeah. all those extra tools yeah, that all the fun stuff. are super helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have like a top five that you would suggest for a new gardener or somebody yeah. new? Yep. And and we actually just brought in some new brands this year that I'm excited to try for this spring. But we have a really cool uh, new glove line um, that are made actually out of recycled water bottles. I oh, have nice. them right here. This is the... It's the um, homegrown Watson gloves. And okay. They're already like our new favorite. We just got them in not too long ago. I've been using them all winter just with like houseplant stuff. So those are a must. Um, knee pads or a knee kneeler um, is great to protect your knees while you're crawling around on the ground digging holes. A really sure. nice trowel. You know, you don't have to have all the tools, but like a nice trowel or transplanter makes things really easy. Um, a really good pruner's. Um, most of us here at the store have a Felco, which is your highest end you can get, but we have everything for all price ranges here that all work really well. The really, the cute dram compact pruners are really cute and they're, they're not very expensive. Um, those are like the, the main starting ones okay. So you can go from there. You can get hats and <laughs> and Hats, any kind and of I have overalls because yeah. sometimes in the summer I don't need to get my shorts dirty, so I just right. throw them on. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That was my like, I think from childhood, we always had a pair of like denim overalls by my grandma's back door. <laughs> and so if you were going out to do anything, she had a lot of berries and blackberries, you would just put those over your clothes to protect your clothing. So right. that's still my habit. Um, but yeah, and like that and rubber boots. Yep. Do you guys yep. carry garden shoes as well? We we have in the past. We um, have them at our App Appleton and Stevens Point lo location. We still carry sloggers there. Okay. Um, but we are looking for a new a new product to bring in for that need. Yeah, that's stores. awesome. Yeah. Um, when it comes to this new pop up, yes, that is exciting. Very that is so exciting. Fun. I've never been involved in anything like this before, and it's been going so well. And we had such a great team up there building it, and we're almost ready to open the doors. And I can't wait for next week. It's it, the grand opening is next week. Yes. <gasps> yep. So wow. we we open uh, March first, okay. and then we have our grand opening the third, fourth, and fifth. So and then we're we're getting food trucks, weather permitting, um, and lots of giveaways, gift card giveaways, a lot of product giveaways. Um, so it's going to be a fun, so a fun experience. If people are looking for information on that and to j come and see the, because this podcast is going to come out like that actually on March 1st. Oh, so if people want to come to the pop-up on yes. in Appleton, how would they find information? Yep. So they can go to our Facebook page. Appleton has a, a John Garden Center uh, Appleton Facebook page. Um, also our website, jungseed.com. If you go up to the Garden Centers tab, um, it'll, it has, it lists all of our garden centers and the addresses and hours, um, for all of them. But yeah, our Facebook is, is a really big way to, that we're getting the word out on, on our giveaways and hours and contests and everything like that. Okay. So Facebook it is. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what is like the craziest request somebody's ever come to the garden center and asked you, like, do you have this in stock? 
Ooh, that's a tricky one. There's been so many. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. Well, I think a lot of people, like special newer gardeners, and we see it all the time, is they don't understand the hardiness zones on things. So, you know, they don't know the difference between a tropical plant that we have in our homes or we use as patio plants in mm-hmm. the spring and summer compared to, you know, what we would actually plant in the ground. So, you know, maybe just confusion over that. Nothing too okay. crazy. A lot of times, some of the crazy requests we actually can get a hold of. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always worth asking. Okay. Yeah. Nothing's too crazy. That's yeah, my daughter, which I knew it existed, but this year when we were going through seed catalog, she's like, I need purple broccoli. And I was like, yeah. I think I got you. Are you Absolutely. can order that because we're yes. going to grow it. You got to pay attention to it too. Yep. But yeah, so I think that's something that has evolved over yes. the last probably decade, sure. maybe a little like closer, but is the amount of what is kind of more rainbow, right? From carrots yes. to cauliflowers so to Brussels sprouts. Yeah. yeah you so really you can, can eat the rainbow now out of your garden for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's kind of fun. Um, any mistakes that you see somebody come into the garden store that you could help the new person not make? Yeah. I mean, I guess if it's, I mean, this time of year right now, we're doing all of the seed starting and house plants are really big for us. Um, we get a lot of people in every week with fungus gnat problems in their house mm-hmm. plants. And so that's always kind of, I think, rookie mistake is not even rookie mistake. It happens to everybody, but overwatering your house plants, especially in the winter. Um, and that's when we start seeing the fungus gnats and the root rot. Um, and again, it's not just a beginner problem. It happens to everybody, but especially beginners, I think, just because you don't really know what you're looking for yet or, or how your plants react. Um, For seed starting, you know, it's, I guess, getting our seeds all past like the germination tests and stuff. But if you're not doing it right, (laughs) they might not germinate properly if you're not keeping them moist and giving enough light and and warmth. Um, That's why we we have all the accessories here for that, Um, you know, the seed seed, seed heating mats and lights. Um, So there's an investment that you need to make in it. For sure. And the nice thing about it, like last year I invested in the trays, the inserts, the domes. You guys shipped me all of that and like, I don't remember how many, 60 quarts maybe. I don't know. I had buckets of seed starting dirt because it's different. It's not potting soil. It's totally different. So we had it in rubber mates. And, but it is reusable. Like the heating mats are reusable. The lights are reusable. But it is, like you said, it's an investment. Yes. Um. For sure. And I know like the bell peppers, this year I bought heating mats because last year I got everything else but not the heating mats. And the bell peppers this year like actually germinated in less than two weeks. And they needed heat. Yes. Last year they took like weeks, (laughs) forever it felt like. Yeah, I think Um, people try to – sometimes maybe if they're new, they they don't want to spend all the money on it right away. And it can be intimidating, all the supplies you need. But – you know, you can just add to it every year like you did and and not have it super overwhelming, but it all really helps a lot. <laughs> and you guys have like a whole kit too. I saw in the catalog yep, this yep, year. The, yep, the right? catalog has a kit. You can order the junk seed starting kit. The store and it comes um, with has all the supplies as well, but yeah. Okay. So way. for anybody that just wants to drive over and if they were to come in, I'm sure they can get an explanation on how to set it up yes. and, yep. and yep. tips and we tricks like there. That. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is so helpful. Okay. Um, I'm like, what else? Like, I just grew up gardening, so I don't always have a lot of like, <laughs> what would be the questions? Yeah. Um, I do know, like, so last year I brought a client up, a garden consult client. That's one of the reasons we came up to Sun Prairie because she needed all her herbs and she wanted, you know, she wanted the experience. And I was like, yeah. cool, let's get in the car. We'll drive. It's like an hour and a half oh, from bad. where we're at in Chicago. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. And she's like, well, do I need to rent a truck? And I was like, how much are we buying? Okay, maybe. <laughs> like, I don't think we have that much land. You you had like a four by six area. <laughs> um, but if they are buying trees or some of the larger stuff, they might need, right, a, a truck yes. or an SUV or something. Yep. I mean, we have fit 
trees into convertibles, um, into hatchbacks, into, you know, your Subaru Outback trucks. We, we've done it all. I've never really had anyone come in, not be able to bring their, their plants home. They know like if they're going to buy five trees, they're going to need to borrow a truck or, yeah. you know, especially in our area, it's more like smaller homes and, and apartment people. So, you know, they might not have a truck. So that is something to think about. Like if you are going to buy a few trees, how are you going to get them home? But we do everything we can here to help you. We have trunk liners and we'll wrap the trees up so they won't get wind burned on the way home. And, and we'll put them in your car for you so you don't have to worry about that. That's awesome. And if you you ship. So if they will, do want to go online yes. and order. Yep. Because so, I yep, got my can, apple trees can, shipped to me last year. Yes. Yep. So that's our, our bare root trees. Um, so this year, Randolph, Stevens Point, and our Fitchburg locations are going to have bare root. So that starts April 1st at the stores. And so that's all the products, all the shrubs and trees and small fruits that you would see in the catalog. Um, Uh They're all literally bare root. Um, And then we all get in the potted stuff uh, the first week of May. First week of May. Okay. Um, If they come into the garden center now, are they able to do any pre-purchasing or is it just what's there and then come back in May? Yeah, it's kind of what's there um, for for bare root, we just tell them, you know, you know, try to order it from the catalog if it's something you really have your heart set on. Like sometimes the garden center might not get it if you know mm-hmm. it sells really well. Um, but there's a lot of just with the COVID thing we've dealt with the last couple of years, the special orders have gotten pretty hard at the stores. So we try to do as much as we can. Um, but most of the time they'll just say, Can you just call me when it comes in? And then okay. we'll absolutely do that. That's amazing customer service. Yeah, we try. It reminds me of my childhood hardware store. <laughs> um, yeah, they used to just – they'd call you if you had – yeah, when it, whenever it arrived and you would just go and pick up what you needed. Um, okay, that is awesome. So my other question I have is – sorry, distraction there as the bell on the computer went off um, – for those people that are going to come in and small space gardening, I know last year we did an Instagram live on small space gardening. Um, if they're going to come in and they know like they have a four by six area and we're going to make a recommendation for edibles, right? Or yep. super easy plants to put in the ground for a first time person. What would you, what would be your like go-to items? Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. Are we looking at vegetables or fruit? Like there's some really great small patio size blueberries and raspberries now um, that have been really popular. So I I would like to do that in a a small garden. Um, But otherwise, too, there's, you know, smaller like determinant pepper or tomatoes. Sorry. Um, And then just like smaller things that you can either reseed like your your lettuce and stuff in the spring and fall. Um, I mean, just especially like lettuce, like you use it, that area for a little while, you could always sow in something after the lettuce is over. You could keep using that, that garden uh, more than for one planting. That is a great point. Yeah. Cause we're going to, you can sow in your early crops. You can get in, right. Your kales and your um, radishes and your lettuces and your different arugulas. And then as it starts to heat up, they bolt. So you pull those out. And then, and ones, yeah. and we also know that come fall, you can re sow like your green beans and your bush beans, which are tinier. Um, those are all good points. Yeah. And yeah. I like doing my beans and sugar snap peas and hanging baskets. I found that's been Ooh. really fun because then I don't have to find a spot for them. <laughs> I can just. That is an forever. amazing idea. Yeah, that's fun. It's fun finding different containers and different ways to do things without spending a ton of money. I'm going to try to trellis the yes. tomato plants this year. That's a good one. I like see doing what um, cucumbers and zucchini and stuff on a chain link fence too. We've always ha- had that and that doesn't take up as much room. That is amazing. Last year I picked up from you guys, they were these round, um, they're for peas or string okay. beans but yeah. or pole beans but they have round and then you run the string and oh, it's got yes. like a hoop at the bottom and a hoop at the top and I use those for the ducant I think is how you say it um the little mini pe- cucumbers oh yeah and they grew right up those strings oh perfect and then they grew they kept growing and then I was like I guess you're gonna have to come <laughs> down the string <laughs> yeah but they 
they were so perfect. So I'm excited to that's use fun. those again this year for the yeah, cucumbers. Yeah, that's perfect for a smaller garden or, an, or in, any size garden. They grow really well on those. Yeah, those are such great tips. What, um, Megan, would you, what would you suggest easy to grow plants if somebody's coming in? What would they look for? Um, things that maybe like won't take a lot of water, uh, stuff like that. Um, or learning how to water. I mean, anybody can grow anything if you're doing it right. Like only water in the morning. So the plants leaves can dry out naturally like that dew, like think of uh-huh. dew in your lawn. That's usually gone by like 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's when you want your plants leaves to dry out as well. Um, and just, you know, keeping everything really neat and clean. Um, the neater the orchard or the neater the garden, the more pest free it'll be or in fungus free. Um, and then just making sure you're putting the right plant in the right place. You know, is it getting enough sunlight? You know, is the winter sun and wind going to damage it? So I think there's not like a real easy, like this is the easiest plant to grow. I think it's just all the the things that we need to do to make it easy. Paying attention. Grow. Yeah. Yes. And they all come with their little card or their envelope yes, on the exactly. seeds and it tells you sun, shade. Yep. Sowing depth, germination, right yep. timeline. Um, when it comes to watering, a lot of people, yep. especially in the suburban area, I know still have like kids and all this stuff to do in the mornings. Yep. Um, what do you recommend for like self-watering or timers? Yeah. Um, we have a couple, you can get like a, even Dram or Melner carry a, a self-watering or a timer. But yeah, soaker hoses, stuff that gets the water right to the plant. Um, and not just spraying all over the place is great, especially with a timer. Um, I like to do it, you know, kind of when you're picturing everyone getting ready for work in the morning in your neighborhood, you don't really want to be taking all the water at that time. So maybe a little bit after that, but making sure it'll dry in time um, by that, around that, yeah. that mid-morning. Um, because I know that people talk about this, but you can probably really explain it. If the water is still on the leaves when the sun is super hot, it becomes like a magnifying glass, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, Yeah. You can get a lot of problems with that. But then also on the reverse of that, if if you water it like at night and the water sits on the leaves and doesn't dry out and is on there all night long, that's when you'll start getting some fungus issues and stuff like that. But yeah, you don't want leaves to burn. Um, So you don't ever want to water when it's, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon and 90 degrees out. You want to wait. even. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you guys carry organic, correct? Yes. And yep. herbicides and all of that stuff as well and fertilizers for different things. Okay. Yeah, we have a full line of all of our fertilizers. We could say chem pests, all of your chemicals, pesticides. Um, we are very heavy on the organic and that's everything that's fertilizers, that's insect and pest control, repellents and herbicides, everything. We, we have a very big organic uh section, I guess, or sections, yeah. and all those sections, because that's really important to our communities here and, and to us. Yeah, I love it. I love that whole, um, what I'm reading more and more now lately about biodynamic gardening. And it's yes. like, it's so fun, right? To it think is. about like, you can make tea and feed your garden tea, which is just basically like a compost with water. Yeah. And compost but there's tea. so much there. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So I have one last question for you. How do you cultivate guts every day? Because the name of the podcast is Cultivating Guts. That's a good one. Huh. Well, me personally, um, well, yeah, a lot of my life does revolve around plants, uh, believe it or not. So, yeah, the the herbs I grow, I I try to use, you know, in my daily cooking and and drinking tea and taking care of my houseplants is really fun and important to me. And, it, you know, when you're cleaning the leaves and fertilizing and making sure they have enough light, buying all the new stuff for them and, you know, houseplant shopping. Um, Yeah, I guess. And then in the spring and summer, just being outside and being in the dirt and just being in the sun, all of it is is healthy and good for you and good for your mind. I love that. I can so relate. Oh my gosh. The dirt and the sun. Yes. yes all of it. Yes. Like I yes. can't wait. <laughs> I know. I'm like yes. 20 more days. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why had, I think it's 20 more a, days, but that's like, what I told no, my kids. Perfect. 
we had an ice storm here yesterday so um that was you know a yeah. rude awakening that I yeah. made this spring yeah. Um, I put up a little low hoop house and I didn't stake it in quite enough over the weekend. Oh, no. And so we had like 50 mile per hour wind gusts yeah. and my little hoop house was in the neighbor's yard and oh, I was no. like, oh, come back. I need you. So he's staked back down now with extra Oh, good. Sticks. Yes. Stake him down. the good. goal is next week to seed um, what, underneath that little hoop house. Oh, excellent. Um, very good. and radishes. Yeah. So very Perfect. cool. Thank you so much. Um, oh, my can pleasure. You quickly run through again where the garden centers are for people. And again, if you're listening to the podcast and you're in Northern Illinois, it is a very short drive. Like I said, it's an hour and a half. So yeah. yeah very short. Yeah. So um, Fitchfer Fitchburg, Wisconsin, uh, Madison, Sun Prairie, Stevens Point, Randolph, and our new pop-up in Appleton, which opens next week on the 1st. I love it. I love it. So fun. I will put the link to Junk Seed in the show notes below, whether you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, or um, YouTube, and you can click over and they'll have instructions and directions and addresses for your GPS. And I encourage everybody who's listening to this to share this podcast and also to go out and visit your local garden center this year. And don't be scared. Thank you, Megan, for joining us. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you. Bye. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want you to share with me what your favorite part was and share with me your unique experience at the Garden Center. Ask me any questions. I'm here for you, and I'm excited to see what you're planting this year. As a reminder, Jung Seed has six garden centers in the Wisconsin area, and they carry over a 1,000 plus seed varieties and the supplies that you need for seed starting success and growing your own backyard garden, whether they offer bare root, annuals, perennials, trees, shrubs, evergreens, and so much more, including succulents and all of your tools uh, that you may need. Much of their supply can, is grown right in Randolph, Wisconsin's greenhouses and then shipped out to their garden centers for us and also shipped out through their catalog orders. It is super fun. So. With that, I want to say Satnam. I love you guys and thank you for listening. So if you love this episode, remember to share it with your friends. Send it to anyone who may love this inspiration or need information on visiting their local garden center. Uh, and if you would like to get our newest book, The Ultimate Green Witch Garden Planner, it is on Amazon and it is on our website, www.cultivatingguts.com. Dot com. We are super excited to have our brand new planner out and available as you plan your garden. It would be the perfect thing for you to download or pick up a printed copy off our website. Get it, all of your plans in there and take it with you to the garden center. Take it with you to Junk Seeds and help them take that design, that vision that you have and create a really amazing and dynamic backyard or front yard garden. You can head over to www.cultivatingguts.com for all the details. Super excited to see you there. And you can also pick up and download any of our current webinars, our classes, or sign up for one of our gardening masterclasses to get all the stuff you need to get going and growing your own food to help your gut.